I just moved into this shop and uh, one of the things I'm dealing with is that I've got a mouse problem. In this video, I'm going to compare a bunch of different live traps I got on Amazon. Uh, this is the first one I'm using. It's a big uh, box trap and I'll show you how it works inside. Uh, you put the peanut butter in here and then it just has two entrances. Uh, hardly any moving parts, but the mouse will kind of cruise in there and it becomes a one-way entrance. In this video, I'm just gonna hopefully trap a ton of mice and talk about the ups and downs, ins and outs, good things, bad things about these various live traps. And then this is one more I'm gonna rig up. I've actually used this one already and caught a pretty big mouse type rat. It was pretty good size. Uh, the way this one works, uh, this is the door and it's pretty simple. It's just spring loaded and the door just kind of clicks down. Uh, then there's a, a plate in here. You can open the back. A plate in here you put the peanut butter on or you know cheese or whatever you're using and the plate trips it. And I've just got these two guys uh, set up at the same time. Uh, it's worth mentioning that one way to set up a trap that usually works pretty well is to put it along the line of travel. Um, I've seen a bunch of mouse poop along this wall and they've been hanging out over here uh, before I put this cabinet up. So I've got them lined up in the field of travel. Two next to each other is not usually the best idea, but we'll just see how it goes. And this is the problem I've been having with this trap is that you can see, maybe, you get some little mouse turds here and the trap has been cleaned out by a lightweight little mouse, you know, like a lightweight mouse. So, I mean, it's not to say it's not a good trap and I have caught larger mouse rats in this thing, but for smaller mice, it gets cleaned out. There's somebody in there? Yeah. I'm gonna open this guy up uh, at the bottom of this rubber trash can. That way you'll be able to see what's going on. Typically, I would just take this to my release site and release it uh, just straight out of the trap. But I'll just crack it here in the bottom of this trash can. You can see what's going on. We got three mice in there. That's pretty awesome. One, two, three. Three mice trapped with this metal trap. And I'm gonna set this guy again tonight and see how many I get. All right, now this is another type of uh, live trap that I haven't shown you yet. Uh, it's a tip trap, and um, it's actually called tip trap, but some are uh, tip traps and they don't go by that name. Anyway, this thing works really simply and effectively, and I've caught a ton of mice in these one at a time. Uh, all you do is you open up the back, and you put some peanut butter in there. Looks like I've got some old kind of dried peanut butter in there. Um, set the back on like this. You just set them like this, and the mouse would then walk in right here and walk to the end and its weight would tip it shut and then it couldn't get out. And like I said, they've been really effective for me in the past. I'm gonna set a couple up in the same area and see what happens. All right, now that's what I'm talking about. It is the next morning and these two tip traps have gone. I guarantee you there are mice in there. Um, this guy, the big boy, did not get interest last night. And I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before. Um, just drop these guys in the bottom of my trash can. That way they can't get out and I can easily take them to my release site. The mouse will usually kind of fight you to get out. But there it is. This is tip trap number two. Oh, tip trap number two is actually empty. It must have just gotten bumped. Yeah, you can see the peanut butter in there. Nothing. All right, so basically the other tip trap was just a little more appealing. I bet if I had this in another location, I would catch some more mice. All right, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do for this third night of uh, live trapping mice. I'm gonna put this on the other side of the shop and see if it gets any interest. All right, so I think it's about the third morning of checking traps out here in the shop. Uh, these ones have just never let me down. They're one mouse at a time, obviously, but uh, at our other house where we had a ton of mice, I just caught a lot using this trap. Come on. Sometimes they don't want to jump out. All right. It is totally essential that you release these guys far from your house. If you just take them out in the yard and release them, forget about it. They're gonna come right back. Um, I actually drive 
a little bit over a mile across a river. We got a river kind of close to our house or a stream and I released them on the other side of the stream just uh, with the hope that they don't come back. This big one, I had the same trouble again last night. You can see uh, the peanut butter got eaten but the trap didn't get tripped. And then this uh, tin cat that I set up on the other side of the shop is actually uh, empty, there are not mice in here. There's a mouse turd right on top of it. But anyway, I'll just leave this out. Um, it was pretty successful the first night. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, as the week goes on. Time to bring out the big guns. Uh, big in terms of size. All right, so the way this guy works is that it's got a big spring right here that you crank. And I'll show you the apparatus inside because uh, it's actually pretty cool. You can see the mice in here when you catch them. Uh, they end up in this compartment. And let me just pop the top off. The mice can enter from this side or this side. And when they get in there, they trip. I think you can see it. It's just a little uh, a mechanism. They trip it and the water wheel kicks them into this compartment here. So you can end up catching multiple mice. Um, you can see it's a little bit nasty in there because uh, once or twice when I've been using this trap, the mice have been sort of snagged by the mechanism and they've ended up dying overnight. So it's a live trap that has some occasional consequences for the mice. Uh, still better than a snap trap if you're a live trapper. Uh, let me show you how it cranks up. Uh, you crank it like this and you can hear it engage each time. So that's two, three, and then to set it off you can either reach in there and flip it, uh, but I'm not going to do that because it's going to sort of snag my finger. So you can also trip the mechanism in here and you just kind of tap this guy and you'll be able to see that the spring, this water wheel, kind of spins like that, flipping the mice back into the container. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna bait it with peanut butter. Same deal, you put the bait inside the trap, that way they smell and they wanna go in the hole, and we'll see how it does tonight. All right, out here checking the traps first thing in the morning. See, the cool thing like I was saying about this trap is that you can tell what you catch by looking in the window, and actually, it's empty. And peanut butter's still in there. So we didn't catch anything in that trap overnight. We'll see how it does the next night. Actually, that one is empty too, so neither of these traps caught any overnight. All right, so after a couple days of trapping in my shop, I uh, stopped catching mice, and that tends to happen to me. Uh, it's just like trapping in any area. It gets trapped out. Either you've caught all the mice or the ones that are left are too smart to get caught in your traps or they're just hanging out someplace else eating other food. Anyway, I brought those four uh, different kinds of live traps with me and I'm gonna hit our barn. And unlike uh, what I did in the shop, uh, out here I'm actually gonna set these guys up um, kind of like in the four corners of the barn, four different areas. I think it'll give me a little bit more advantage over the mice and uh, uh, just because I'm not like doubling up or tripling up in one spot. And these are the two tip traps and I'm gonna set them up here next to our grain supplies. So I think I'll set one on top of this grain bin and the other one down here on the floor. Uh, just because the floor is made out of rock and gravel, I'm just setting it on this little board right here and we'll see how those do. And this is that green trap that I had trouble with out in the shop, just I think because it's too big. Uh, it takes you know a bit of a heavier rodent to set the trap off. And I'm gonna put it back here on this corner back behind the uh, water supply. All right, this guy I'm going to put back here in the corner of this stall, uh, just because I know mice have been coming in this corner here. And this is the live trap in the back of the stall. And I'm just gonna set this guy down here near this straw where uh, mice do tend to bed down. All right, fingers crossed, I've got my trap set and I think this is gonna be my last night of trapping for this video, so we'll have to see how it goes. All right, first thing in the morning and I'm gonna check the traps. All right, this is the green guy and dang it, the same thing happened out here in the barn as was happening in the house. 
Uh, it's not sprung and the peanut butter has been eaten. All right, next up are those two tip traps. And it looks like, I don't know if there's one in there, but looks like they both got sprung. Let's see if there's mice inside. But let's check this one out. Yep. And this is the second tip trap I set. There's a mouse in there. So we're up to two so far. And then the next trap is that big uh, victory one that I put over here. And oh, it looks like it's empty. Dang, that surprises me. This one, uh, you remember the first night caught like three mice, so I'll set that out again. So that concludes my live trapping experiment. You've got to be persistent. I think uh, what we saw here is pretty typical that I trapped in my shop for a while. It went pretty well at first and then there were diminishing returns. Now I've shifted to the barn and obviously started catching mice. I was a little surprised that that victory, that big uh, rectangular square trap, that victory trap uh, didn't do any better. Um, uh, this first night in the barn, but we'll see what happens uh, over time. Uh, a lot of people ask me like, what's the best trap? I like those multiplex traps, like the big silver uh, victory one, uh, just because you know you have the chance of catching multiple mice, but over time, uh, consistently, those little black tip traps have gotta be the best. Uh, one mouse a night, every trap, every time, until you're out of mice or they're too smart, or they've relocated, or they're someplace else. Uh, those traps, of course, you gotta empty them one at a time. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but they just work really well. Now, uh, I've posted videos before about uh, taking care of mice, and I gotta say just a couple things here at the end, if you've watched the end. Uh, number one is that if you wanna get rid of mice and rats, you've gotta get rid of their bedding opportunities, their egress, like their, their opportunities to get into the structure or out of the structure, and you've gotta get rid of their food sources. Uh, if you just trap them, or kill them, or whatever you do, get a cat, they're just gonna keep coming back. And they're gonna have places to hide, and they're gonna have nourishment, and that kind of thing. So you gotta get rid of their bedding, you gotta block their entrances with steel wool, or wood, or whatever, and uh, you've got to clean up so that they you know, just don't wanna live there. There are also some just like really rabidly strong advocates for killing mice. Like you've gotta get glue traps, you gotta use snap traps, you gotta use a cat, and go for it if that's your approach. But uh, this video is just to show you that there are alternatives for uh, live trapping of mice, but you gotta relocate those things far away. You gotta get in the car or take a long bike ride uh, to move those mice. If you just put them outside the house, they're just gonna come back in. They're smart animals, they can swim, they can run a long distance, they can survive many days without food. So they're pretty hardcore, and you've got to bring them a long way from your house if you want it to work out. The other thing I wanted to mention is that these are live traps you can buy, but uh, you can also make live traps, and I didn't even get into that on this video. Uh, there's a very common a uh, commonly constructed uh, bucket trap with a, with a tip, uh, tip piece of wood, like on a hinge. And some people tip that thing into water and drown the rat, uh, rats and mice. But you can also just tip it into a large trash can. Uh, if people are interested, I can make a video about that. You end up with a big trash can full of mice at the end of the night. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can use a barrel trap, a rotating barrel trap. Similar idea, basically you're getting the mouse to go out onto some kind of precipice that is unstable but the mouse doesn't know it and the barrel spins and the mouse falls. Um, I've made those in the past too and they've worked pretty well. Uh, sometimes I end up with like a squirrel in there instead of a mouse and the squirrel eats all the peanut butter and then jumps out. So anyway, it's touch and go when you're a trapper. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, hit me down below with a comment, I, I will respond. Uh, for me, my favorite thing about YouTube is that it's a place for people to comment and talk to each other and get in fights and appreciate one another and all that kind of stuff. So comment down below and I'll, I will respond. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. You will also see that there's a playlist of videos that this one is part of about uh, catching mice, electronic pest repellers and how crappy they are and stuff like that. All right, good luck out there with your rodents.